Good evening and welcome to TDM Talk Show. I'm your host, Kelsey Wilhelm. Our guest tonight is an events and mice expert, the president of the Macau Meetings, Incentives and Special Events Association, Bruno Simoish. Amongst the ongoing pressure of the coronavirus on Macau and the day the casino is officially reopened after their 15-day shutdown, we sit down to talk about how the epidemic has affected Macau's events industry and the SMEs that make it happen. Thank you very much for being on the show. This is a very complicated time. It's been very interesting to see not only the historical shutdown of the casinos, but the ongoing impact of the epidemic situation within Macau. What is the feeling within the mice industry right now? Well, the mice industry, and, and maybe I, I translate a little bit, uh, mice industry means uh, business events. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, business events in these kind of situations, they are completely uh, stopped. Uh, in standstill, cancelled, postponed, but mm -hmm. uh, you know companies can't afford to risk anything during their events. Safety comes first. Yes, of course. So at the moment we, we, we don't have any business in general mm -hmm. um, in this area. Nearly zero business depending on the situation and, and the point now is uh, when is this going to start getting better? Yeah. When can yeah. we start getting some uh, you know, requests, the phone doesn't ring, mm -hmm. we hardly receive an email, which is something uh, uh, incredible. It's, it looks like the streets of Macau last week, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Our, our flow of uh, requests and communication was, was like the streets of Macau. Mm -hmm. So uh, it still hasn't changed much, but um, everyone is quite confident. And there, there was a previous experience uh, in Macau during SARS. And this gradually will, will, will improve. It's just a matter of uh, when and mm -hmm. uh, how quickly it will improve. Depends also on the type of events and on the type of yeah. uh, business events, but that's what we're talking now. Mm -hmm. We've seen that Macau is in a very unique and lucky situation in terms of not only having been so dependent on the casino industry so far, but we've built up such large reserves because of that. And um, the government has acted pretty swiftly to figure out how to implement certain packages and relief measures to help the local population and, and they're, they're working out the ones for the SMEs and the local businesses. But this is the secondary side of these huge um, venues that have come up specifically across the, the Kotai Strip and it, it's surprising to see them empty. I mean even the House of Dancing Water Show has been put on, on hold and uh, I don't think Macau has gone through anything quite like this before. The, how much does this show the value of the supply chain then for how these events are being carried out? Because organizing these events, you have to work with multiple stakeholders across different sizes of companies. How are all of these companies working through this period? Well, I, I think this, this is a supply chain, correct? Mm -hmm. this is, um, everyone is suffering from, there's no, the city lives uh, mostly from, from tourism, mm -hmm. from casinos first, and then from the hospitality industry in general. And the whole supply chain is being affected from the supplier of drinks <laughs> to, to everything else and the mm -hmm. supplier of services. In our case, uh, it's, as I said, it's, it's dramatic, even if the, the the borders and the tourists start flowing in, the confidence in doing events in Macau mm -hmm. will take longer because yeah. it's not only the news, it's the stigma that stays in our region, uh, especially in, 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 in China in general, the, the stigma that stays. Uh, hopefully, I think Macau has a good uh, track record and Macau has passed an image and we, we can't forget that um, the major uh, source of business to Macau is from mainland China, mm -hmm. even in the business events industry. And hopefully we have a very good track record in this, um, in this uh, situation, in this outbreak. We don't have cases for days, we have just a limited number of cases. We were able to contain uh, extremely well mm -hmm. the virus. So I think when, when you start comparing to uh, the region and other neighboring cities, in a way or another, we, we have a, a better track record. So I think that also passes uh, some positive image for the event organizers when they will think, let's do an event, okay, let's do an event nearby because this is also a bad year, economic bad year. So don't travel too far away. So I think that's also positive for Macau in that sense. Now, the two companies that you're managing, DocDMC and Small World Connections, um, I'm interested in terms of the 
the mixture of your clientele. Because obviously this, the casino shutdown and the tourism limitation, extreme limitation, has had a direct effect on visitation from mainland China and therefore spend from mainland China. But in regards to your clientele, um, they're not, from what I understood of, of the, the bio and everything, the clientele is not exclusively from China. In fact, there's quite a few Western names there. So could we expect that after this does, the main peak of the epidemic does pass, that you might actually see your clientele base come back quicker than, say, we might see a return of the Chinese market to Macau in terms of visitation? Well, that we, we don't know exactly what mm -hmm. will be the, the It's hard flow. to estimate anything. Yeah, right yeah. Well, our mix of clientele is, is um, a little bit diverse, uh, I would say. Uh, we focus 95% uh, um, outside of Macau, so mm -hmm. our clients are international. Uh, in the great majority of the cases, they are multinationals. Mm -hmm. Uh, many from Hong Kong, but from mainland China, so where, where multinationals are headquartered uh, mm -hmm. uh, in Asia, say, um, Shanghai, say Hong Kong, say okay. Singapore, or other cities, but these are probably the major, foc major source of business that we have for these multinationals. Interesting that uh, for, for conferences, that's uh, DOC, DMC does more conferences mm -hmm. and meetings for, for those uh, corporate clients is, is the major business. Those, uh, I think the effect will be, you know, the recovery will be slower okay. because I, we we'll probably are looking, we, we reach that conclusion, we probably are looking only at the last quarter. From October, November, we might get some business back or okay. next year because, you know, decisions are, they are moving their, their events elsewhere, they're canceling or they are not going to do anything before summer, summer they don't do, so. Um, it's it's quite lost that mm -hmm. segment you know meetings conferences either corporate or associations whatever it's the decisions are taken many months ahead and and probably the business this year is all almost all gone okay for the other segment we we, we do a lot of team building we support more local meetings for companies in Hong Kong team building smaller scale events those they probably will be back I mean Many companies, they, they have their plans and they need to implement their plans. I mean, life goes on, right? They mm -hmm. need to pick up the business, they need to pick up action, they need to activate clients, they need to activate marketing campaigns, sales, and, and they will use events and some of our services to do that. And in that sense, they will, they will once they can, they will do events. Mm -hmm. But this is, you know, neighboring clients, mostly from Hong Kong, some from Macau as well. And this will pick up faster. So there's different rhythms depending on the type on the type of events. Given that this is spread around Asia quite quickly, and we have so many different cases in different countries, as far as a, far away as the United States, the typical competition that it seems like you could have for, let's say, some of the expositions or exhibitions, larger scale meetings such as maybe the Philippines, Singapore, they all have cases also. Does that really serve as a benefit? or a detriment to the industry as a whole? I mean, as a benefit to Macau in terms of having a quicker recovery, or because all of Southeast Asia does have pretty much cases, is that going to limit people's desire to do events within Southeast Asia in general? I, I don't think so, although there's, there's cases everywhere. It's like um, our direct comp competitors, say Bangkok, uh, mm -hmm. Singapore. I don't think, I don't think the the image there is the same that we have here in China, yes. for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so we will suffer longer and more, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely. And our competition is suffering a lot. I mean, um, Singapore just announced, uh, I think it was uh, 4.5 billion US dollars mm -hmm. support to the economy. And they are suffering a lot because they shut down the borders. And again, they are a city that lives a lot from the, the hospitality industry. So, um, but they will recover faster. For, for, for that reason is, is the image, is the stigma. And we, we are uh, closer to the epicenter of the outbreak and that's, that's the way things work in, in, the, in the minds of uh, decision makers. Yeah. Now you do have offices in Zhuhai as well as Hong Kong and Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. In regards to Hong Kong, what is the feeling there? In Hong Kong, we, we have a small operation, but um, Hong Kong, interesting, uh, they, they came from a bad, posi a bad position in terms of events. The, the, we've been suffering a lot from, from the, the, 
the situation in Hong Kong mm -hmm. since last summer. We mm -hmm. also suffered in Macau, that's, that's a point. Uh, last year we were uh, down about 25%, uh, uh, okay. especially because of the Hong Kong situation. So uh, now imagine after, after uh, six, months, uh, six months of crisis, you, you have this outbreak. So mm -hmm. Hong Kong is pretty dramatic. It was before Chinese New Year, it mm -hmm. was before the outbreak. Our, our friends, our colleagues in the same business in Hong Kong, they are living dramatic situations. Before the, 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 the Chinese New Year, they were already, you know, nearly. Numerous cancellations, <laughs> yeah. I saw some of the large-scale oh, events. I mean, they sent people home, they, they asked people to look for other jobs, they are, you know, the, their reserves are gone. Mm -hmm. And uh, the situation in Hong Kong is much more dramatic than Macau. We, we, we are quite lucky here. Not only because we, we one month ago there, there was uh, no crisis here, but also because the government here is quite supportive. And in Hong Kong, that's not the case. They, they don't announce this type, or they didn't announce yet this type of measures. They have announced a certain type of stimulus, but we have yet to see how this will play out over the long term, especially given the sentiment towards um, how, by Hong Kong people, towards how this is all, all reacted. That does bring us back to what the new government that we have only had since December has managed to do in terms of reaction to this, in particular for SMEs. Um, so they did announce a number of measures to try and help out the small and medium enterprises. That goes up, that includes bank loans and reductions on the interest rate you would have to pay on some of these bank loans. For companies which are having less business, do you think that a bank loan is the best way to help them forward? Are there other possible measures that could also be beneficial to these companies to help weather the epidemic? Well, Aside to, from to just getting free SMEs, money. <laughs> SMEs in general, yeah. as, as, a, as a manager, mm -hmm. imagine you have to decide, okay, there's, there's a crisis, we have uh, nearly no business, and we don't know how long this is going to last. Mm -hmm. So imagine, let's get a, a loan for, for three months, but yeah. this might last five. Yeah. That's probably not, not the best solution to, to, for your company. You, mm -hmm. you have to, to figure out other, other solutions. Mm -hmm. It might help, obviously, it's a very good help, and an uh, interest-free loan yes. is a very good deal uh, yeah. in any sure. cases. Sure. Uh, but I, I don't think that would, that would save much uh, employment, much jobs in the city. I mean. Uh, Managers, they have to do they take the, the hard decisions that is to lay off people if necessary, mm -hmm. uh, because if we can't have everyone uh, receiving salaries and, and and then when the oxygen is over, we all die. <laughs> That's True. Um, a good metaphor. Yeah. A lot of these people who are who we've seen who have communicated directly to TDM about uh, numerous work situations, um, including being fired or being forced to take uh, unpaid leave, they are blue card holders. They're some of the more vulnerable people within, within Macau. Do you think that we're going to see an overall reduction of the number of blue card holders after this epidemic? I, I don't think so. The number, I, I don't think so. We, we also have two non-resident workers in our, in our company and uh, we can't afford to lose uh, them. We can't yeah. afford to lose them and, and there's quotas and so on. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, unfortunately, they're, they're no, no one mentions them in, in any uh, um, you know, help. No one mentions them. It's easy for us and it's easy for anyone to send a non-resident home for two, three months without pay. Uh, for them, it's like, shall I, shall I keep this job or I lose this yes. job for, for good? Uh, mm -hmm. For most of them, I would say. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, in that sense, the Macau government is, uh, is not thinking about a, a fair society, uh, a society that, that ignores, I think it's more than 100,000 people in Macau that are non-resident workers and the poorest people in the city and the, the people that really need their salaries, they are... Uh, 100% ignored from all measures that were announced. And I don't think that's, that's a, a fair society. I think Macau spending so many billion uh, Macau dollars and Macau having more than, uh, I think it's uh, 20 Years billion uh, Macau dollars, they could provide something to, to those uh, non-residents. They really need their salaries to support their kids, their families. They really need their jobs.
We do have, the, when they announced the, the new measures and encompassing the SME measures and also the individual, for example, the professional income tax and measures like that, they did say that those were exclusively for residents of Macau. They also did have the, the electricity and water um, fee uh, taken away, and that included households. So that was the, the one measure, it seems, so far, which does encompass blue card holders aside from the mask sharing scheme. But the... Um, at the time, the secretary mentioned something along the lines of people need to be prepared to change jobs. Um, that seems like it's a lot more flexible for someone who already has a Macau permanent ID. Um, but we'll see how the market plays out. We'll see how things go. Yes, I think this, this is a recession like in, uh, in any economy. We, will, we are in a downturn. Uh, mm -hmm. Fortunately, this is a short recession. Uh, Everybody expects this to last a few months, but um, and in recessions there will be there will be more unemployment. There will be a lot of layoffs, uh, and it, it is what it is. It's it's the reality, uh, and and those measures about taxes and so on. I, I I tend to say they are for rich people. I mean, in terms of personal tax, they only they only um, uh, cater for people that make uh, earns more than 16,000 Macau dollars and, and what, what about those under 15,000 Macau dollars? There's a lot of people under, under that uh, area, under that uh, income level. And also we, we, we have to consider that giving the same to the whole population, it's, mm -hmm. it's not exactly fair. So you mm -hmm. are giving the same to the richest person in town to, than the poorest, per, poorest uh, person in town. Mm -hmm. Is, is that fair? I, I understand it's easy, mm -hmm. it's easy to implement, but, but the government does have uh, personal tax income declarations. They could do that to give zero to the richest and the double to the poorest people. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's what is done when they charge, uh, when they implement the income tax. And that, that should be done when they, they, they give support to the residents, not even mentioning the, the non-residents that get zero at, at the moment. Yeah. True. I mean, if, if it's a measure which is meant to stimulate consumption in the economy and have these SMEs have more consumers, uh, if you can have a blue card holder who's able to spend as much money as a resident, the shop owner isn't necessarily going to distinguish with the two. Money is money. I think our society holds them a lot. We, I don't need to comment on that because uh, everyone in Macau knows what is a non-resident worker mm -hmm. from, from in our homes, from our the everyday life. So mm -hmm. we owe them a lot. Building the massive infrastructure that we have out here as well, yeah, on, and the service industry, they yeah. are all over. Mm -hmm. They are all over. Going back to the mice industry, um, there, it was already under pressure before. Um, we had seen even just in terms of revenue versus expenditure on this sector, we see that there is roughly three times the expenditure versus the revenue that's coming in. So we're seeing that it's a highly subsidized industry, and it's primarily focused within the operations of the six main concessionaire holders of the gaming licenses. But all you have to do is look across at Heng Chin and see the growth of the facilities there and the growth of the marketing strategies that they're doing for mainland China and for regionally across Asia. But we still have a border. And I know that from speaking with other people involved in, in mice and hotels and, and gaming, that continues to be a problem in terms of the flux of people. Do you think that that Heng Chin is going to be any type of threat in terms of pulling away some of the business, or Zhuhai in and of itself, because Zhuhai has more facilities than Heng Chin. Do you think that after this is all over, Zhuhai is going to be a bit of a threat to Macau, or can it be an add-on? Can we have facilities in Macau which will then complement the facilities of Zhuhai, or vice versa? I, I, totally, I totally defend that uh, Zhuhai, and especially Heng Chin, should be integrated in Macau. I, I Fully integrated. Even, uh, even before the Greater Bay Area uh, concept and promotion that has been um, done very, very intensively. Mm -hmm. uh, just think, I mean, how many rooms do we have in, in Han Ching and what kind of uh, um, target we have there, what kind of activities we can play there. Mm -hmm. Leisure, family, not five-star luxury. So that's a compliment Macau absolutely needs. What do we have for the average family for 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 families for uh, you know the, the 
the medium, um, the medium size of the market. Mm -hmm. Almost nothing in Macau. Everything is quite luxurious. We need space. We don't have space. Angqing has space. So I think the integration is a matter of time. And it, again, it needs po political courage. Mm -hmm. I think it's more about the real estate and, uh, and the, the powerful interests of the city that they don't want to open to Hanqing. Obviously, Hanqing is, is willing to open and they, they, they need uh, the part of our 40 million visitors a year to, to feed their business. Um, it's just a matter of time, I think, and, and I think it will be a very, a very positive move when, once it will happen. Another thing that we need to, to and this is something that would, would um, benefit a lot Macau, and it's fairly easy to implement, is better access to Hong Kong airport. Yes. So we, we build a bridge, right? Uh, it's next to Hong Kong airport, and everybody knows to, to reach the airport is not easy. We have to carry luggage, we have to take a public bus. If we want to take a, a private car, it costs a fortune, and no one believes the price. What are we waiting to, to easy the, the flux of, uh, of uh, visitors to the city? Business events, it's, it's uh, um, um, the most obvious diversification of the economy we can have. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have a fantastic infrastructure, but it's handicapped. How can people reach Macau? Mm -hmm. They can't easily. It's still a nightmare to bring people from the airport, although we have a bridge, although we as citizens can do it you know, fairly easy, but to explain this to a corporate client, you have to do this, you have to do that. They look at you like, you must be kidding, no? How much it costs a, a private transfer for my, for my CEO? Mm -hmm. Oh, don't worry, it's just uh, 500 US dollars. Uh, really? Yes, yes, and uh, good luck on that. Mm -hmm. not, there's not so much offer. So we have to solve that. We have to upgrade our airport uh, dramatically. It's, yeah. What are we doing? We are doing. We are putting some patches in the airport and fixing the minor details. No, we need a, you know, um, good level airport as we have in Kotai. Good level meeting mm -hmm. um, uh, infrastructure, very good hotels, good restaurants, and so on. But the airport needs to be at the same level. Do you think that given the economic impact of everything that's happening and the restructuring that will have to be done, that the government is going to reach out more to shareholders within the industry now and really try and push that diversification. We do have the advantage of having a new government. One of those elements of the new government is the new Secretary for Economy and Finance. Do you think now would be the point where once we get past this and we need to hit the recovery phase hard, they're going to reach out to people such as through IPIM and have you seen any signs of that happening so far? Well, we're, we're talking about two different things. We're talking about the, how, how, how the new contract with um, the casino operators, that they also operate the, the meeting facilities and they operate the hotels. That's a whole other there's kind no of There's no meeting without hotels, right? And there's <laughs> yeah. no casino without hotels. So they are all in the same, in the same um, Basket. bag. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're asking me, there should be a uh, change. Of course, there should be. Of course, the, the concessionaries of the casinos, they promised a lot. They will be doing entertainment. They will be doing uh, meetings, conference, exhibitions, festivals, and so on. Some did. Uh, I can mention names. Uh, Sands did a lot. Mm -hmm. Others did nearly nothing or zero. Uh, what happened? Well, they all gave up. In 2015, there was a casino downturn. They all gave up to do anything. They focus yeah. only on casino. Mm -hmm. They still focus on casino. So when the casino goes up, there's no meet and there's no meetings. Why we don't have hotel rooms because they all goes to the casino business. So all those promises, I, I think, uh, not all, but I, I would I would say that 80 percent of the promises were 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 in vain. Um, I mean, they were not uh, set and. Everybody uh, sees that the, the renewal of the contracts will, will, do, will, um, will bring changes in this respect. And I hopefully um, think that uh, there will be more you know, enforcement of the promises. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need in the renewal. The, they had the talked about the, you know, the compound average growth rate of the uh, non-gaming versus gaming. But that's a very interesting line because the hotel can comp something that is non-gaming then that it's actually paying for itself, but then it contributes to its percentage of non-gaming, even though it's for a gaming client. So there, there are a couple workarounds that people tend to work with. In terms of that, those, those 
necessary elements for the non-gaming diversification in Macau, aside from just creating a lot of meeting rooms, massive arenas, things like that, do you think that the specifics of those changes need to be put into the legislation itself? I, I think so. This should be very concrete in terms of um, a program uh, that the concessionaires could, should be responsible for. For instance, uh, uh, a quota for, for meeting rooms uh, mm -hmm. usage. Okay. I mean, we can't have the meeting rooms empty. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they prefer to have the meeting rooms empty because they don't have accommodation rooms or, or a quota of the accommodation rooms for the business events or for leisure, pure, pure okay. leisure. Or um, a number of uh, events per year or festivals or, mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of things they, they can do and uh, build more, you know, three-star hotels, four-star hotels. Mm -hmm. Build more infrastructure for, for leisure. For instance, I, I give you an example. N no hotel has a bar now. It's normal <laughs> if you go in a normal country, mm -hmm. you go, you ask, where is the bar? So if you go to our mega hotels in Macau, there's no bar. Mm -hmm. They have a bar, they click the, the requirement. But as a business event organizer, you think, I, I never been to a hotel that doesn't have a bar for our uh, management, for our whatever, uh, go after the meeting. It's, it's, uh, it's something that shows um, how focused we are in the casino business. Mm -hmm. Totally focused in the casino business. Well, and as you had mentioned before, the, um, the fact that there was the downturn and they focused again on the casino business. We have specific examples. I'm not sure if the timing is exact, but there were definitely carry-on effects. Uh, Doc TMC was involved in the Wine and Dine Festival. Um, there used to be the Jazz, uh, Kota Jazz and Blues Festival. You know, we did have these events that were happening and then we went from yay to nay. <laughs> but um, there is the talk of having a potential seventh concessionaire come into the playing in terms of that. Would that be beneficial to the mice market? Well, again, if, if they can do whatever they... They, they promise? They, <laughs> they can do whatever is beneficial for the casinos, there's more, more of the same. I, I don't think one more would, would change anything in the business events industry. It's but does Macau need more facilities or do we already have enough venues so far to, to attract I, those types of... I think of we, we have enough. What, what we need, I mean, you have to imagine, you, you do a, a conference, you do a meeting, you, you need more. It's not only to have a fantastic hotel and meeting rooms. Mm -hmm. Where do you do a gala dinner in a special place? You go to the, to the meeting room again. How do you arrive in Macau? Look at our taxi service, our transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. I don't need to comment on that. Oh, but we have the LRT now. Yes, that helps. That helps for our, for our industry. But, you know, it's these soft, uh, soft skills that we need to improve. Where, where can... I mean, there's no bar street in, in a city like this. Mm -hmm. Is it normal? Do you know any city in Asia without a bar street where people will go for restaurants and so on? Fortunately, old, old Taipa is, 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 um, is renewed, is yeah. changed, is, yeah, is, true. Is, is having a good environment. But it's full of little restaurants, small restaurants, excellent. But we don't have a bar street. Mm -hmm. We don't have good taxis. This is the things that the city needs to think strategically. Mm -hmm. What kind of elements do we need to attract the leisure market and the business event market? Mm -hmm. There's a, a strategic plan in place, uh, uh, in, in paper, <laughs> but we need to start implementing it. We need to start changing the city to... J just look at, at uh, Singapore, for instance, is, yeah. is the best example we have in, in, um, in Asia. Look, look at Singapore, the way they have strategically positioned uh, the city to have fantastic infrastructure in terms of transportation, attractions and attractions that are made, you know, with a strategic point um, uh, that, that bring the flow of tourists, they come and come and come over and over. That's what Macau needs. And hopefully they'll be focusing more on it now in terms of actually implementing the diversification because of this economic downturn. For the people in the mice industry and for all of the related supply chains so far, in, during this downturn, do you have any suggestions as towards what they can do to prepare themselves for the future? Yes. Um, well, I, I, I can use the metaphor when, when, um, when there's a storm in the sea, and sometimes the storm can, can last for one or two weeks in winter time. We don't go out and fish, but we, we do repair our boats, we do upgrade our boats, 
We do train the young fishermen, we, we fix our nets, we fish our hooks and uh, we repair our hooks and sharpen our, our, our tools. That's what the industry should be doing now. Uh, should be training its people, should be, you know, uh, trimming its processes, should be doing things we never have time to do and that's the, sometimes the most important things, the strategic things, the promotional uh, tools. That's what we are doing in our companies. We are working from home, no problem, but um, some people is, is on uh, unpaid leave and so on, but we are preparing, we are throwing the seeds for, for, for the future. And, uh, and I think I, I suggest that uh, it's, it's what everything everyone else is thinking, but that's re what we really need to do. Mm -hmm. What the government should be doing, and IPIM, um, the Macau Trade and Investment Promotion Institute, they oversee the business events. Mm -hmm. Uh, they, are, they, will, they are already preparing measures to help uh, the small and medium enterprises in our area. They, they, they are in, on the good track, I would say. They, okay. they met the industry leaders, the associations in this area. And um, they are thinking on the right way. They are, they are really trying to help the industry. Let's see, let's see, they will announce. I can't comment on that for now, but they, they will announce soon their measures. But uh, in my opinion, I think they need, they really need to, to come up with, a, um, you know, intensive uh, communication campaigns, promotional activities. Mm -hmm. Once the, the storm is over, we need to go out to the sea and, and, and promote Macau. And as I, I said before, Macau has a good track record in terms mm -hmm. of this oh, yeah. outbreak and has a fantastic infrastructure and, to, and so on. But we really need to upgrade our, our marketing tools, or the city marketing tools. We need to get united in the, in the industry as well and promote together. Mm -hmm. uh, it can't be just pushed by the government. You know, the private sector, we also need yeah. to, to, to help each other and work together to, to, to promote and, and, and say that Macau is not is not uh, Shanghai that is near the outbreak. Macau is not Hong Kong uh, for other reasons. Macau is here, is a heaven. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that will bear fruits very soon. Well, let's hope that in times of crisis, we can all come together and we will get through this. Thank you very much for being on the Thank show. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we have this week from TDM Talk Show. Join us again next week for more. Good night.